Hello and welcome to another Council of Elders. I'm Elder Kennedy and I'm very, very glad to be back as your host. And I wish to thank Elder Johansson for being the host while I've been away. Uh, thank you very much, brother, for that. I know you're back with the mad one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, without further ado, I would like to uh, also introduce Elder Cabin, Elder Kelvin, and of course, like I said, myself, Elder Kennedy. Okay, so uh, with the uh, fact we have new elders, and it's uh, Elder Kelvin's first time here, I would like her to talk about the Return of Christ book for you. Sister, please. Thank you. This, this is the Return of Christ book. You can find this book on Amazon, with all the information that you need, and the link is in the description below. Thank you, sister. You're welcome, sister. Right, the reason why we're here today is we are changing the format. From now, you will see things that are in the news that are of very high importance as regards to the end of days. Some of those things will be discussed each time we're here, okay? And the first section we're going to be discussing is actually to do with the volcanic activity around the world. And I know that uh, Elder Cavin has uh, some information about that for us. Uh, could you take it away, brother? Certainly, sister, Samantha. The big news on the volcanic activity this week is there's 52 erupting volcanoes. Uh, that, the big one is St. Vincent volcano at La Soufria. Uh, it erupted in an explosion rush and hot gas just days after the island's Prime Minister said only people vaccinated would be uh, able to get evacuated from the island. That's right? not fair. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, uh, La, La Soufria uh, that's on St. Vincent Island. But we do have ongoing activity uh, on a daily basis uh, at the Icelandic volcano. Now, that's just, there's no end into that. Mm. That's actually getting worse on a daily basis. And we do know, especially here in the UK, what happened uh, the last time that erupted. Yeah, so I certainly do. Remember blacked that, well, out the whole, yeah, blacked out the whole of the UK. Yeah, it couldn't get a flight, they shut the flights yeah. down. And, yeah. That's right, all the airports were shut down and that, all that ash even here, you know. Mm. But uh, there is another one. Yellowstone has had, uh, just recently, actually, I think it was a day and a half ago, a four-point magnitude earthquake that struck it. Now, this is not getting reported from the, the USGS. They're keeping this hidden. A lot mm. of these earthquakes, that, especially the bigger ones, yeah. they're, reporting those, they're reporting the small ones, but uh, the larger ones, they're keeping that under their belt just so the public can't uh, get this information. It certainly uh, makes you wonder why, doesn't it, brother? The fact that yeah. they're doing such a thing like that, but they don't yeah. care. Yeah. Now, Mary Greenlee, uh, news, she's actually reporting on this. She's been doing this for a good few years, actually, on Yellowstone, because she's, she actually knew that uh, they were not reporting on a lot of these uh, earth, well, the larger earthquakes, in any case, you know, uh, to get out to the public. But she reported this week that uh, there was a 4.2, plus uh, there was a magma incursion into the Norris Lake, Lake uh, Junction. Now, Scientists did record that that was where the last time that Yellowstone actually erupted, it actually started at Norris Junction. Now this magma uh, intrusion into there right, looks like that this could start the big one there mm. in Yellowstone. So Mary Greenlee is actually, and she's keeping an eye on this as of this moment in time. They can be so destructive volcanoes. I actually have a fun fact uh, that I heard on a chemistry lecture uh, that I watched a while back. 
and it's that the largest explosion ever recorded on Earth was from a volcano. Apparently, I think it was a, an underwater volcano where salt water sort of got trapped in a chamber with a volcano and the water evaporated and eventually it exploded. And it was the equivalent of something like 200,000 tons of TNT or something mm. and sent shockwaves seven times around the world and could hear be heard 2,000 miles away. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, that actually goes into what I was saying with uh, the St. Vincent volcano, uh, just a, and that actually goes into scripture, as, uh, as far as I'm concerned here. Okay. If you have that, if you have that video. Yeah, certainly, brother. Uh, I'll share that for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want the sound? Oh, yes, you do want the sound. Okay. This large eruption. Any but 10 o'clock yet? Across the planet. I mean, 10 o'clock in the morning. And that's what this volcano activity report and is all about. This is St. Lucie. Crop Hill, St. Lucie. Again, my prayers are with everyone what? there. So we are looking at 41 active and erupting volcanoes around that's, the planet. That's great, sister. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now that goes into scripture, as I said, Job 2, 31. The sun will be turned uh, to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And the next uh, blood moon is scheduled for May the 26th of this year, which is not too far away. Yeah, it's, very, it's so, not far away, is it now? Really? Yeah. Mm. These scriptures are getting fulfilled at a tremendous rate. Mm. Was it no something to, to, to do with that moon? I mean, it, could it be that moon, the red blood moon, that is mentioned uh, for the actual day of the Lord? Because it it's be. a blood moon, yeah, in a sense. Right. Well, this yeah. is the this is the last this is the last one of this year. Hmm. So it could yeah. well be. I mean, I was thinking you've got the classic part where you've got people who are hiding in caves and under rocks to hide from he who sits upon the throne. Why would you hide in caves and under rocks to start with unless you're hiding from like a war as well? Something major going off. And exactly. one of the main things is you've got these elite that would, would hide in these, in these, these tunnels and cave systems that are hiding from nuclear war. Yeah, in order to, you know, keep command and stuff like that. Plus, if you've got um, asteroids coming in, because there's an asteroid due as well. Um, if you've got children that are seeing uh, World War Three uh, points of impact on certain things as well. I think with some young lad. You know, so you've got all these things that are emanating. If you've got a blood moon that's, you know, registered to happen then with what you're seeing building up at the moment would fall into place because you've got war you've got rumors of war you've got you know, the the things coming in left right and center and of course you've got nemesis coming in so with all those bodies of activity that's creating all the tectonical plate movements you know you've got a shifting yeah of this magma and you've, because of all this pressure that's going off, you know, you, what happens when the moon just goes round? People get affected by that. But if you've got all these planetoids that are out of the spectrum and they can only be seen by our sun when they come near it, then, you know, these things are going to make the earth wobble like a drunkard. And we're seeing that yeah. because we're also seeing the moon going out of, out of proportion at times. Yeah? Exactly. Yeah, that's been reported as well. Mm. I mean, <laughs> one of the one of the main things, like I said, I was actually getting onto the subject of is this World War Three, and I know that uh, I'm going to show you guys um, some of the uh, news that's been going off, and obviously you've got uh, Ukraine wants Putin a painful consequences if troops cross border, and uh, then you've got. Uh, she's discussing the situation with uh, Russia, war, 
Got Putin's robot army sent to Ukraine border as troops ready for conflict. You know, so you've got all these news clippings. You've got even got like something to do with Turkey there, where Ukraine turns to Turkey as Russian threatens full scale war. So that just uh, shows what's been going off. Exactly, and, and that goes into scripture as well, sister. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Matthew 24, six, uh, verses 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumours, of course. See that you are not alarmed. Mm. For this must take place, for the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Yep. I mean, uh, uh, there's, uh, there's another point is that if, it, if we, America remained with Trump, I don't think this would have been the case of what we're seeing now. Exactly. exactly. And the thing is, we're seeing a fool in that president's place. A fool that shouldn't, in my opinion, be there. And Nostradamus said about a reference to the fool and the harlot. So these people would bring about World War Three, And we're already seeing that happening. Where the, even the military command saying prepare, you know, it's oh. highly likely now that we're going to war, nuclear war. <coughs> and they seem to all have grown much more bold now that Trump is not in office anymore because he, because he sort of kept them in check. Mm. He was very good at that actually. Right, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and they they do sense some weakness now in Biden, and I actually doubt that he will. Uh, be at you know fulfill his term i think something will happen to him before that before it's over he's he's in, re he's in a really bad shape and i think people around the world see that mm. and they you know they see the opportunity and they move move their forces forward testing the boundaries i think that's what we're seeing right now and because in fact you've got this element of um, civil war happening off in america because you've got the left and you've got the right so you've got the the sheep and you've got the goats mm. and uh, you're seeing that split happening in america as to who's right and who's left and people can't mm. even see that point but it's that's why it's happening that's what he said people on the left people on the right you know yeah <laughs> So uh, exactly, yeah. what could actually happen as well when you think about things? See if uh, Russia and China, I mean China attacking Taiwan, Russia attacking Crimea simultaneously, mm. right? If that was happening simultaneously. Then uh, America would the forces would be split. Mm. That would leave. That would leave Israel wide open for Iran. Yeah. And you're already right. seeing that little bit where you've had Iranian terrorists, you've had the uh, Israeli uh, ship that was uh, attacked, and you've had, was it a exactly. uh, nuclear facility not long ago? Right. That's right. You know? So you can see this tit for tat going off, and you can see the build up, but it's also going to be like a huge, you know, multiple fronts. So exactly. you can't. You know, you just send your forces to help that person who's a who's an ally. If you're gonna have to have another one with that ally, and then that ally, you know, you split everywhere. Exactly. So you, all the yep. forces that you did have, you just can't fight a war on multiple fronts like that. It's impossible. You'd end up losing a huge portion of your own forces. You have to pick and choose. Yeah. You know, as well, to who you ignore and who you're gonna hand up having to help. Well, Putin's now got 150,000 troops mm. uh, on the front of Crimea, right at mm. this moment in time for nothing. Yeah. yeah same with, 15 uh, aircraft? Yeah, it's the same with China and uh, the China Sea right at this mm. moment in time as well. They've got so many ships and everything there. Yeah. That's, that's, that seems to be a good scenario yeah. where uh, they do it kind of simultaneously and it leaves <laughs> Israel wide, wide open for Iran, you know. I mean, there's, there's one thing as a leader, you don't put all your troops out there right next to a border, particularly that amount of number, 
I do nothing with them. It's unheard of, right? Yeah. You you you're gonna use them at the right yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. want to use them. They're just waiting for the right opportunity, and it could come any day. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. But there is just... also a threat. There is also a threat for the UK as well to be bombed. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, the um, United Kingdom have been getting involved. Um, there's been others that other leaders that have been coming forward, and you've you know been told you know don't rub up and be nice with China or be nice with Russia. You know, I mean, they had recently was it the Australian woman or New Zealand? Recently, I think it was the New Zealand one, and she was rubbing shoulders with the Chinese. You know. Um, so it just shows you that the people are actually starting to pick their size as well now. So, uh, and I sort of have a feeling that uh, these sides are going to be balanced in a way that they're basically going to destroy each other. They're mm -hmm. going to weaken each other so much that there's, you know, people are going to say, well, what, what are we fighting for, basically? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you certainly don't poke the bear and you certainly don't pull the dragon's tail. And the thing with, yeah. with, with China, I mean, they, that's why they do all these displays, is the fact that the, the military is huge, you know? Yeah. They totally outnumber every single, nearly all the forces around the world, for goodness sake, you know? The numbers are magnified. Oh. And, I mean, they uh, have a lot of... They're, they're sending so many ships mm. uh, into the Black Sea, or around that area, yeah. and they're sending so many ships to different countries into the, the China Sea. Mm. Right now, isn't there a prophecy as well that, that states a uh, third of the world's ships uh, yeah. will be sunk? Yeah, now, I mean, that, could, that could be another fulfillment of prophecy. Then is it Vilgolin or Vilgillen or something to do with the also the, the, the Jews have to wear their um Shabbat clothes uh, because yeah. of this Russian Crimean prophecy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Von Aguion, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, definitely looking towards that because you, you, I mean, this has obviously been happening for a few years now. It's not just the build, you know, the revelation stating about the war and people presume the great day of the Lord is over in one day and I'll begin as one day. It is not. It's a spread over a greater proportion of time and it builds up and builds up and builds up during the Armageddon period. To the point where eventually from conventional weapons you are then starting to say right somebody's going to turn around and say i'm going to press that button it pushed me too far mm. and i think that when the bible says uh, something is going to happen in a day or an hour i mm. think the main point they want to make is that it's going to happen very quickly yeah maybe <laughs> not necessarily perhaps in an hour or so but very mm. very quickly i mean russia has the best uh new warheads and the one is called satan and that can get here normally we'd have probably 30 just take england for instance probably 30 to 40 nuclear weapons that would probably hit the united kingdom just to get nuclear you know weapon, you know, like the military and parliament or whatever with these satan's missiles you only need like one or two maybe three to you know, to get what it needs to be done on, on this country, because the yield literally goes out to a far, far greater distance, and these things come in far ra more rapidly, and with pinpoint accuracy. You know, people need to get this stupid thing out of their head, where they think that Russian technology is like hit something. With, if it hits something that doesn't work, they'll hit it with a spanner, because it's rusty. You know. I mean, they took the Mickey out of this like, Armageddon film and the Russian in the in the space station. He says, "Yeah, hey, Russian, you know, you're seeing bang, 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 you know." <laughs> but by the way, not um, like that. I don't remember exactly, but does the UK have nuclear weapons? Yes, we do. Yeah, yes, we do. All right, and I believe France does as well. Yes. Right. Yeah. So uh, you've got the yeah, because it's all part and parcel of the NATO uh, pact. Um, oh. So the, yes, there's a lot of nuclear weapons uh, for each country as part of that. Um, oh. And yes, I mean, most Israel, countries don't have though. Yeah, Israel does have its own, 
you know they do have nuclear yeah. weapons uh people just don't know where they are but we, we do <laughs> but uh yes <laughs> yeah they can't hide it from us you know <laughs> But um, yeah. they do. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but they do. They do have these nuclear weapons, and um, you know, unfortunately, when it comes down to the prophecy side of things, they might use them. But I think it may be too late for them to use. Um, but uh, you, you will see that. I mean, prophecies regarding to IDF, uh, where they get wiped out. Um, yes, I've seen that also in the vision myself. So I do know that to be right there's a lot of visions that have been coming uh, through to not just the children of the you know but you're getting other people that have been shown world war three literally and they tend to be more like the alphas and the z generation and they're being shown this world war three and they're also being shown the fact that they're being collected by you know the angelics so we will be seeing this and it looks like it's coming very 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 quickly and uh, you know people aren't prepared they're still not awake to what's going on i mean the lord came as a thief of the night he came at night it was the biggest clue anyone can have in scripture that he would come at night time um do you have yeah. anything on that sir brother yeah, well, uh, that holds the cloud prophecy as well, doesn't it? When uh, it sees the cloud, I mean, the Christian is normal as uh, he's coming down on a, a fluffy cloud and every eye is going to see him. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know as well as I do that that just is the heart, right? So the cloud was referenced from uh, for the internet, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's the only way that every eye can see him. Yeah. Right? Mm. Through the use of the internet. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, Microsoft, they call it the cloud. Mm. It's, it's as simple as that. That was the reference to the internet. Yep. Definitely. Um, I was going to show you something. Uh, just that principle to the, to the people. Okay. So we're going to rule out something here. So just pretend this is Earth. Uh, pretend on the top of here. It's Israel. Now, a little man would be about there. That's a little speck. How's the rest of the world supposed to see him? That's that little speck from around here and around here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, at the same time. No. The only way people can see that person or that element that's bringing him, which is like lightning that went from east to west would be on the internet where you guys are watching us now through the cloud system that is where every eye can see but it doesn't say at the same time show me in the bible where it says at the same time and actually uh, it makes sense that the lord would use social media in this time it's the mm -hmm. absolute best way to connect people from all over the world yeah and still uh we have people mocking the lord for that mm. uh, but uh you know i mean it makes perfect sense that he would gather he it says he was he's going to gather his people from all the corners of the earth mm -hmm. and what's the base best way to do that it's just the internet yep i hope would people expect him to you know walk everywhere that's quite inefficient, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like it's, it's, it's true because you, you, it's the same thing as like uh, John, uh, Johannan, and he was given visions, and not in the same order, but he was given these visions of our time, of what is happening now. Now, you've got to bear in mind he's a fisherman, he is the youngest out of the disciples. He's been through a lot of stuff. He's had to hide. He's had to do, do a lot of the stuff. He's even been boiled in oil and blah, blah, blah. And he's up on Patmos and he's getting these visions. And he's having to explain to people in his time period about our time period and our tech. Yeah. 
which is very hard to do. So he has to explain it by describing something the best way he can. And that is where a lot of the confusion with Christians and that come into play. You know, because they don't understand it. Mm. Yeah. And it's very similar to uh, the Ezekiel wheel, I would say, where mm. there's a book of Ezekiel where he describes a UFO and he yeah. describes it as a disc or a wheel within a wheel carried mm -hmm. by four creatures and uh, uh, it's, you know, blowing out a flame or something. And if you really think about it, if you visualize it inside your head, it's really a UFO he's describing yeah. with the uh, stands and, uh, and flame coming out of it. I mean, how many but, times also has it been a reference about the millstone? Something looked like a millstone. What is a millstone? It's circular. And then you've, it's literally like that, and then you've got another one underneath it, and it, it's literally, I'm quite good at doing that. It's literally like that moving around. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like doing that bit on the, you know. <laughs> it's that way. Big <laughs> uh, Yeah, it's circular, and it will hold, it will hold like a little donut, but it's, it's, it's like that. And it's, it's describing a circular object. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> what is the, what's circular? It goes around and goes like that and spins. It's a UFO. But there, there's also a reference to the cigar shaped objects because you've got the pillar, the flaming pillar of fire that proceeded in the, in the uh, Israelites in the desert. All right? That's a cigar shaped object. But you also, if you turn it up the other way, if it came downwards and spiralled around with the heat and the friction of it spinning, would give off the flame effect of another pillar of fire that's blocking the Egyptians from getting into where the Israelites are. You know, so all this tech has been used by the angelics to help precede man at specific times in history for specific oh. purposes. So, you know, when people are seeing these UFOs, what they class as UFOs, they're actually angelic ships. They are the Lord's fleet. Yeah. Mm. And it yeah. seems to me that a lot of religious people have very much difficulty with the concept of aliens or beings mm. that are not from this world um, being very, uh, you know, when they talk about a a a angels, mm. things like that. Uh, it seems like people would prefer to think of it as another dimension or something yeah. rather than you know, something that's alien, something that's not from this earth that's exists in our dimension it's very real <laughs> yeah but, although calling yeah, demons <laughs> yeah it's uh, so weird because uh yeshua said himself that uh well you are from from down here and i'm from up there mm. and it's uh, very clear to me what he's talking about and uh i don't know but so, i think that was more common <laughs> way back in the uh, you know in early christendom i think it was more common that people believed the uh, believe that yeah oh, have you seen alien today like with suckers on its fingers, like, going, yeah, oh, it's a demon, you know. <laughs> but really, you know, they, they don't seem to understand the greater picture. They are so unfocused, it's unreal. Because these, what you call aliens, are angelics, and it's a, a angelic is a title or rank, a role that you play in the service of God, right? That's why you get the most in the fleets, etc., etc. You've got guardian angels that will come out of phase and, and be, re you know, since your time your birth, they're there for you to protect you, to guide you, to make sure you are going on the correct path. So, so there's, all, <coughs> there's all these different kind of roles that they play. And the thing is, the, it's the abundance of life and variety that is not just on earth, it's out there too as part of the, the Lord's fleet and the, the greater plan of the Father. It's only human ignorance and arrogance that they think that A, humans are supposed to be the only intelligent life in the entire universe, <coughs> right? And they're correct, yeah, totally and utterly wrong. But at the end of the day, you've got this you know, all these different species that eventually in the new kingdom, you will have the opportunity to be among and learn from in those thousand years. So that is why the fleet are here now and you're seeing them en masse. 
And all they're doing is waiting for the correct time in order to collect those elite, those chosen. You know? And then whoever's left behind the tears are going to be in for a rude awakening. Because what do you do when you collected the harvest, that wheat that oh, is mentioned yes. by Yeshua? Yeah. And he mentioned about the, feet, the, the wheat field, about the seeds mm. being dropped. And he said about the weeds that, you, that grow within. You can't get the wheat out without pulling weeds up as well at the same time. So the only way around that is to get rid totally of those weeds afterwards. You burn away the field and you clean it so that the chosen wheat can be placed back you know, in the right stitch in the new kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's something about that in Revelation, right? Yeah. There's a, you know, the burn, burning away of the tears. But it's, it's, a, it's also a very good story that was actually done by Yeshua on many different counts. Even when you, f you threw the uh, seeds onto the rocks, threw the seeds into the, the, the thorns, and then eventually threw the seeds into the good soil. Yeah, everything that he gave as a parable and a teaching had a much greater meaning to those who truly understand and, and are enlightened. And it's down to his disciples and his elders, like we are, that have been get, passing down those teachings and explaining, like on this elders, you know, what those teachings mean, where we are right now. Yeah. And it's up to people out there to really sit down and open their eyes and open their ears and listen. I can read if you want from Matthew thirteen thirty. Yes. Please. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Hmm. <laughs> and like, like you said also with the uh, preparing yourself being that those maidens with the lamps with the oil you know there's all these little messages that have been deliberately put in place so that the wise may understand mm. any more scriptures for us brother on that or uh, I was reading here uh, there's something a little bit later in the same chapter 13, Matthew there, uh, from verse 40. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. Just so we know when we're talking about. Uh, the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Mm. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, he who has ears let to hear, let them let him hear. So there's a lot about that. And if I think it's exact, exactly the same thing repeated in Revelation as well. Yeah. Um, and this is the time of the harvest for sure. Yeah. And the wasn't that mentioned itself. in the Lord's address, the very first address he mentions? And he said yeah. around and said, The harvest has begun. Yeah. Yeah. And there's uh, so many parables about that. Sometimes the parable is uh, as a vineyard and mm. the souls are grapes yeah. that are harvested and they're um, made into wine and such. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of parables about that. And the, the interesting thing is that Yeshua also said that we were given the gift to understand what he meant. Mm. And uh, it wasn't for everyone to understand really. Yeah. With an heart, a noble mind and a noble heart. Because mm. if you have those and have that understanding, you see everything, all the messages clearly. You know, it's like seeing a full picture of a pic pic yeah. uh, you know, jigsaw puzzle. You're not just yeah. seeing one little snippet here, one little snippet there. It's like the parable of the fig tree. Yeah. The parable of the fig tree, that's exactly where we are now. Exactly. Mm. And spring's, really... here. spring's here we've got the birds on the, birds on the trees mm. summer's just around the corner now yeah I mean I mean, look at what, what's happening That I mean, Israel are so desperate now because of the Messiah thing that they've even you know faked this guy 
they're supposed to be, uh, you know, their messiah, you know, the faked things coming out. And, uh, you know, that's not, that's not the first, it's not the last one they've done, you know, but when they were presented with the real messiah, they were more interested in their own pockets, their own, you know, persona, that, you know, peership and stuff, you know, that was going off. So he said, oh yeah, pay me and I'll look at what you've got. They haven't changed in, mm. in all that time. They're still thinking of money first and their own persona and esteem, you know. No, look at me. I, you know, that's why you get a, a rabbi that's turning around. That's one of the guys, I'm, by the way, who's turning around. He, he's, he's collapsing. He's making a song and that, saying, "Oh, oh, uh, yeah, Messiah is coming." He's in the Elijah cage, by the way. He's, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. <coughs> you know? Oh, I, I've had a vision. It wasn't a headache, but I've had a vision. Right? Uh, he's seen this, and it, he gets paid a lot of money from the media. Rabbi sees uh, Mashiach coming. You know. Whilst he's in the logic cage falling down. Hmm. And that's cool. the same trap, by the way. But at the end of the day, you know, he was interested in that. Yeah. Right? And so, those uh, who do uh, know are afraid to talk. Yeah. Like Kaduri, yeah. Rabbi Kaduri. He was afraid to reveal the name Yeshua before he died. Yeah. And just uh, yeah. saved it in a letter to be opened after his death. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, to have because you know, this was all like prophesied with him that he would end up seeing messiah before not long before he was due to die and he was privileged to be chosen to have that happen and that yeah. was fulfilled because the lord did go to him before coming and you know he didn't do it i mean who in the right mind refuses the son of god mm. you know they're more afraid of men than yeah. they are of God. And they should fear God. You know, it's, it, it, it's just, it's mind boggling. And they wonder why they're still having this problem in Israel. They wonder why they're going to end up having their country invaded. Mm. You know, it's because of their own stubbornness and arrogance. Yeah. Well, That's yes, they should have, should have been in Europe and not further. Uh, yeah, that, that nuclear city getting bombed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, I would like to uh, end this tonight, and uh, I'm going to say that next time we are going to talk about the biggest subject that everyone else has been talking about since what a year ago, and that is the uh, COVID 19 and the lockdown and this uh, so called vaccine. And, uh, you know, so we're going to be talking about that next time. And uh, hopefully uh, a couple of the elders will be joining us again for that. So, so it's about two weeks and uh, we'll be back and soon. That should be very interesting. There's a lot of things there that people don't really think about that. Uh, there's a lot of many purposes that are hidden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'm Fair looking enough. forward to, to talking about that. And, and also, you know, through uh, some personal experience as well that I'd like to to share with you guys uh, in that episode. Okay, so I'd like to thank the, the panel of elders and uh, thank you very much for being here today. And uh, I'd like to thank the audience for tuning in and watching us. And I'd like to give you a blessing. May you be blessed. May you be protected in the name of Lord Rael. Amen. 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 Okay, and uh, see you again soon, and uh, bye for now. Bye. Bye.